Hi, this is Rob Connery, and in this talk, you're going to see an extension that I put together called the PG Chat Participant, and it's easy to install. You can get it right through the extension marketplace. And what this allows you to do is to chat with your database uh, using GitHub Copilot. You do that through the uh, PG Chat Participant at PG, and they just ask any questions. Uh, this participant is aware of the schema of your database, including tables and views, and it's a lot of fun to play with. I hope you enjoy. If you've been using GitHub Copilot on the daily, well, you know how good it can be for general programming tasks. I've been using it nonstop for the last few months, and it's been extremely helpful, especially Copilot chat, or when you're goofing around with leak code problems. Other times, I wish I could ask you questions more applicable to my project, like help me write a sales rollup query. Copilot's pretty good, and it'll do its best to help me out, but the code it provides is generic at best. Yeah, I'm not using MySQL, and I don't have a table named sales table, but, you know, that's the best answer I guess I'm going to get, right? Because there's no way that Copilot can magically know the schema of my database. But wouldn't it be fun if it did? What if we could chat with our database using Copilot, and it would just know what our schema is? And then we could run the code that it gave us so we could see the responses JSON or something. Well, as it turns out, now you can do exactly this. Let me show you how by using the new Copilot extensions. Let's start from the very beginning and create our own extension. This is a brand new node application that I just created using npm init, and I added some configuration here to package.json. I'll put a link to the code in the description below so you can see the settings that you need to add. For the extension code, I have a single file called extension.js, which exports two functions, activate and deactivate, and we'll only be focusing on activate for this demo. All of the magic for our extension happens inside of a handler function which is given the request, the chat context, output stream, and cancellation token. Finally, I need to wire up my participants so that Copilot Extensions knows there's a new chat participant. I'll call mine PG, which has to match the ID defined in package.json. The handler can do anything that an extension can do, with the added benefit of having access to the chat input and the chat window. To handle the chat request, I'll ask for the prompt that the user just entered, and then I'll add some context to it so GitHub Copilot knows what's going on. For fun, I'll ask for the response using some good old Aussie rhyming slang, because why not? DBAs are cranky anyway, so let's lighten the mood. The last thing to do is to wrap up my prompt in an API construct so I can send it off. To send my prompt to GitHub Copilot, I need to use the Copilot extension's send chat request method, specifying the LLM I want to use, passing along my messages in any options, as well as the cancellation token. The response I get back has a stream attached to it, and when I iterate on the stream, I'll have Copilot's reply. To show that to the user, I use stream.markdown, and that is that. Right, let's see if it works. I'll open up the debugger and choose Run and Debug. If you're asked for a runtime environment, make sure you choose VS Code Extension Development. You should see VS Code pop up. If you do, open up a chat window if it's not already open, and you should see our participant when you enter the at sigil. There it is, at PG. Let's ask for a sales rollup query once again and see what happens. Copilot's going to take a few seconds to think, and I have edited out the delay here for time. And there we have it. A detailed explanation of a sales roll-up query presented in fine Australian vernacular. Well, what's a, what's a cobber? <laughs> okay. Oh, I know that one. Fair dinkum. This is interesting, but I think we can make this a whole lot more useful by making Copilot aware of our schema. But how do we do that? I'm going to add a file to my project and call it schema.js. Keep it simple. And it will export the DDL, the data definition language, for my database. I'll fix this later on to be a little bit more dynamic. But for right now, this will work for what we need. This database, by the way, is the Chinook sample database for Postgres. Back in my extension code, I'll require the schema and alter my prompt, adding the schema right into the prompt itself, telling Copilot what it is and what I expect. At the end here, I'll add some pepper to ensure that Copilot does its best and doesn't wander off making up table and column names. The last thing I did was to remove the Aussie stuff because, you know, they're sensitive. They're really sensitive. They don't like it when you make fun of them. And that's it. As we're all learning, the more context you give to an LLM, the better answer you'll get. I'll ask Copilot to create a sales query for me one more time and skipping ahead. Ah, uh, yes. Look at that. Copilot is acknowledging the schema and showing a complete query 
understanding what's in my database. All right, hard coding the database schema won't work for our extension going forward. So let's change that. I've installed a Postgres driver, PG Promise, to the extension project, and also created a DB module with a get schema method that will query the meta information in my database using the SQL here. It returns table names, column names, data types, and other information. Next, I'll add a utility method that will take that query and turn it into DDL, data definition language, which is basically a bunch of create table statements that I can pass off to Copilot. This will be the schema that we're gonna upload dynamically so Copilot knows what our database looks like. Okay, back in the extension code, I'll replace the hard-coded schema with the one generated from my database. Let's rerun the query and make sure that everything works. All right. This is a good first start. Our connection string though is hard coded, which is something I'll need to fix. I'll get to that in just a few minutes using a slash command. Speaking of, what's a slash command? Slash commands are extremely useful with chat extensions as they can run functionality in VS code, or as you're about to see, help focus your user's request. Here I'm adding a slash command to our chat participant, which will focus the chat request on generating DDL instead of CRUD queries. Now that I've added the specification to package.json, I need to add some code to handle the command. Back in extension.js, I simply need to see if a command was used, and I can do that using request.command. If DDL is passed, I can change the prompt, as you see here. All right, let's try it out. I wanna add a coupons table to my database with tracking information, which will hopefully be related to existing tables. So that's what I'm gonna ask for. Man, looking at that SQL, all right. With the help of our chat command, Copilot understood what we wanted to do and created a solid schema for us, relating both customers and invoices in a minute to minute. That's good work right there. Okay, let's go and fix the connection string issue. I'll start by passing in the connection string to the method that I've been using here, get schema, and ensuring that it's used with our driver. Next, I'll make sure that I add the con command to package.json. In the extension code, I'll create a module level variable and default it to the test database. In the handler, I'll check the request once again to see if the command was con, and if it was, I'll reset the connection variable. Notice here that I'm using the chat input to let the user know that the connection was reset. Chat feedback from your participant is really important, and every request from your user should have a response, if possible. All right, let's see if this will work. I'll start up the debugger as I've been doing, which will connect to the Chinook sample database by default. And I'll also do what I've been doing and asking for a sales query. Copilot will return something we have seen before. Hooray, hooray, this is using the Chinook schema. Let's change that now. Let's change it to TW, which is the Tailwind sample database that I have running here locally. The connection has changed, as we can see. And now I can just up arrow and rerun the same prompt, my sales query. The answer this time is based on Tailwind schema. Yeah, it's working. Extending Copilot chat in VS Code is a powerful thing. Let's skip ahead and I'll show you what I put together over the last few weeks while playing around with the Postgres chat participant that you've been watching me build. My goal with this project was to not only give you an interesting reference, but also code that you could use to get started yourself. For instance, here's a participant base class that you can extend as you need. It takes care of common tasks like setting the LLM and parsing code blocks from Copilot's chat response. The logic for sending a chat request as well as handling the chat request is also there for you, so you can concentrate on creating your participant and not worry about the plumbing. There are also utility classes that you can use to help wire up slash commands and to work with the editor, writing, showing, and reading code files. Why would you want all of these things? Well, let me show you what's possible with Copilot and the power of VS Code extensions. My full powered PG chat participant is running in the debugger here and it's using the Chinook database. I'm gonna ask Copilot what my top 10 selling albums are and I've edited down the response time. And that looks like a pretty good query. Notice below that I'm able to show a few action buttons right in the chat too. Clicking on run this and the SQL from Copilot's response is run and the results are shown as a JSON file right in the editor. Looks like Minya Historia is my top selling album, but I wonder what other albums were bought along with it. Let's ask. This is called a co-occurrence sales query. And as you can see, it's not the easiest SQL to write. I wonder if this will work. Well, it wouldn't be a very fun demo if it didn't. <laughs> Copilot nailed this one. The results show all the other albums bought with Minya Historia. Very nice. 
Okay, let's switch databases to Tailwind once again. I can't remember the table names here that are in the database, so I'll use the show command. Yeah, there they are. Let's have a look at the products table. I'll use the show command once again, but this time I'll pass in the name products, which will return the schema definition for me. Copilot doesn't just run queries, it can also alter things in our database if we like. For instance, I want to add a full text index to my products description field. Copilot can generate the SQL for us and then execute it. There we go, that looks like a pretty good full text index to me. What happens if we run this? You think it's going to work? Of course it does! Here we can see a notice that the query executed successfully. Well, now that we have an index, how do we actually query it? Well, again, we can just ask Copilot. I'll query on the term brush using the full text index. The return SQL looks pretty good. I think uh, we're using 2TS query. This looks pretty good. Let's run this and see if it works. And it does. Wait a minute. I meant to query on broom, not brush. That's okay. I can edit the SQL returned by Copilot right here in the editor and then rerun. This is super useful for handling mistakes. Speaking of, what happens when Copilot gives us invalid SQL? That happens from time to time. Copilot might hallucinate column names or data types. Here, I'm asking to query the bunny table. <laughs> I don't have a bunny table, although it sounds like fun. All right, if I run this, we're going to get an error. And when that happens, my extension will grab that error and the SQL that caused it. As you can see, the error is provided in a comment where we can change the SQL to see if we can get it to work. Are you running this? And there we go. All right, I'll be honest with you. The only way I could get this to happen was to use the GPT 3.5 LLM. It's faster, but not as precise as GPT 4.0. So I'll switch this back and I will ask the same question of Copilot and see what happens. And as you can see, it refuses. Even if I get pushy and demand that Copilot create a query that doesn't comply with my schema, the 4.0 LLM will be polite about it, but protect me from myself. Good job, Copilot. If you're interested in looking at the code for the extension, there's a link in the description below. I had a blast playing around with Copilot extensions and I hope you do too. So, what kind of participant are you going to create? Thanks for watching and happy extension coding.